Good morning, boys and girls. It is Miss Underwood, and today is Monday, March the 23rd, and it is Roger Underwood's birthday. Happy birthday, Roger! Silent screams. He's still sleeping. So, when he wakes up, we're going to have birthday cake and a party this afternoon, but it's going to be an inside party. But that's okay, we're still gonna party and sing happy birthday. So think about Roger later today and wish him a happy birthday. He is a turning a teenager. He's gonna be 13 years old. That makes Miss Underwood old. But I tell you that all the time anyway. But today is Monday, March the 23rd, and it is day number 10 of us. And I changed it because I didn't like saying not hugging. So I said, it is day number 10 of us virtual hugging. So that sounds more positive to me. And I think right now we need to be more positive. So we are virtual hugging. So good morning. And I have picked a very special book because I think you might have this superpower too. So this book is called The Summer Nick taught his cat to read. And it is written and illustrated by Curtis Manley and Kate. Where are you the page? Um, Burby. So, the summer Nick taught his cats to read. And it's not summer yet, but it's a little bit from school. So, let's see if you can use what Nick did to maybe teach your pets to read. And that's the first picture that you can see. I'm gonna push this down a little bit so you can see the whole picture. Nick had two cats, Vern and Stevenson. Now it looks like Nick likes his cats very much. They spent summers doing everything together. But when Nick sat down with a book, the cats had their own ideas. I really hope each and every one of you are spending time with the book every day. So Nick decided to teach them to read. He to start he he started with Easy words. No, what does Miss Underwood call those words? That's right, power words. Ball, Nick said. B all. But the cats just wanted to play. You see, he made his cats flashcards, and they just wanted to play with that ball. At lunchtime, Nick pointed to the word food, and the cats ignored him. Wake up, Nick said after they fell asleep. This is no time for a n a p. And he spelled, sounded it out. So he was stretching and sounding it out using our stretchy snake. His cats did not like that at all. So Nick made new flashcards and Vern got interested, but not Stevenson. Stevenson just said, merp, and crawled under the bed. So Nick made the flashcards, see what he did? He cut the flashcards in shapes. That's pretty smart of Nick, isn't it? I like that Nick doesn't give up. Nick tried nursery rhymes next. When he read Three Little Kittens, Vern searched everywhere for mittens, but not Stevenson. Hmm, did we read nursery rhymes earlier this week? <gasps> then Nick read his favorite books to Vern, who likes stories about cats and stories about fish. Vern loved fish. 
he followed along as Nick read, learning the sounds of letters. Does that sound a lot like how Miss Underwood is teaching you how to read? That Nick is a smart little boy. He has been paying close attention to how his teacher is teaching him how to read. So Vern practiced on his own over and over, even after Nick went to bed. Soon he was reading stories all by himself, just like my little boys and girls in my class. The next morning, Nick tried one more. Fish. See? Fish. Vern loves the word, don't you? But Stevenson said, meow, and ran under the porch. And he hissed at Nick and Vern. Vern got his own library card and borrowed so many books that Nick could hardly carry them home. When they discovered a story they both liked, they acted out their favorite scenes. They dug up fish fossils in the flower bed and they bounced across the surface of the moon. It was fun, but what it would have been more fun was Stevenson. You see, Miss Underwood tells you that books can take you anywhere you want to go. Then Vern discovered a treasure under the bed, a great stack of Stevenson's pirate drawings. Wow, Nick whispered. Stevenson drew a great story. So that must mean Stevenson is a... That's right, he's an author. We should write the words, said Nick, and Vern helped because the first stage of any story and any writing is learning to draw. That's right. When they were done, a squeeze under the porch gave Stevenson an eye patch and read the tale of one-eyed Stevenson and the pirate gold. Stevenson listened and followed along. He didn't run away or hiss, not even once. Arrgh. So Vern and Nick took him to the library to find more books. What kind of books do you think they picked up for him? That's right, just like Miss Underwood would for you. If you like pirate books, what kind of book would she tell you to pick out? Pirate books. The next morning, when Nick woke up, Stevenson already had his whiskers in a book. <gasps> that means he's got spring's gonna grow. Look at that. Nick doesn't even have his eyes open. Then, when Nick and Vern needed help fighting pirates, Stevenson found a sword too. Welcome aboard, matey, Nick yelled. Step lively. Nick and Vern rounded up two scurvy mutineers, and Stevenson held them at bay. And that's their little stuffed animals they're playing with. So the book gave them an idea of how they could play for the day. Then Nick and Vern climbed the mast, looked out over the treasure island. When Nick yelled, land ho! Stevenson was right there with them. And they all hurried down, waded ashore. And it was when Stevenson who found the buried treasure. That book really opened up their imagination and allowed them to have a lot of fun just from him starting to write. Now Nick and his cats hunt for dinosaurs in the lost world behind the garden. They race around the yard in 80 seconds. Oh, wow, that's fast. And they journey to the center of the basement. Look at all those different places they go. All the 
because they started reading a book. Sometimes Vernon and Stevenson curl up with their own books, and sometimes Nick reads to them while they close their eyes and purr. We call that partner reading, right? But Nick also likes it when someone reads to him. Maybe I should teach you how to speak, he says to his cat. How hard could that be? Meow, says Stevenson. He's like, I'm, I don't want any part of that. I just like to read. So, that was a pretty cool book because Nick followed the model that his teacher gave him on how to teach someone how to read. And so, today, since we haven't been together in a while, we're going to practice some of our power words, just like Nick did. And make sure that we're not forgetting those power words, because those power words really unlock a book for us. Because these are words that we should know at flash speed. So the reason why we should know these words at flash speed, because even as a grown-up, what you read is made up of 85% of these words. And so if we know these words really, really fast, then when we're reading, the other words are what we can concentrate on. Okay, so y'all ready to practice? All right, let's see. Sit. Down. Want. This. Here. Was. Go. Half. I. In. Is. No. We. The. Some people say the. To. Up. For. And. And. Uh, big. Where. There. Can. Come, do, on, look, at, are, see. Good job! Okay, now parents, for those of you that are watching with your kids, we don't want them to be sounding out those words. We want them to be able to say those words very quickly. So if they're still sounding those words out, we want them to keep practicing until they know those words just as soon as they see those words, any way and any order. And you can play games with them, you can play match, you can write their words on a card, um, but we just want them to, as soon as they see that word, they know that it's C. We don't want these particular words for them to have to sound out. And if you need a list, you can contact me in the comments and I'll be happy to provide you a list of those, of those power words that we have, especially the beginning list of power words. Because like I said, almost six, uh, as an adult, even as an adult, those words that you read make up almost 80 to 95% of what you read. And if you're still sounding those words out, you're going to struggle reading as we move up. But, Back to boys and girls. Miss Underwood has brought home some sounds that we haven't practiced in a while, but they're some of my favorite sounds that help us unlock. And remember, when we do sounds, we are looking for chunks that we know. So I brought a special guest. So I'm gonna pause just a second and I'll be right back because I have to go get my special guest. Hold on, just wait, because it's worth it. This is Miss Underwood's Chunky Monkey. Now, I wore my heart shirt because I'm sending you all my love, but it's my safari heart shirt because today we are working on Chunky Monkey. And Chunky Monkey is we are looking for chunks of sounds that we know when we are sounding out words. And these are some sounds that we have already covered in Miss Underwood's first grade class, but I did want us to review them. Chunky Monkey here is feeling a little jealous, so he wants to get some full view here. So, you want to sit on my shoulder? All right. Come on. All right. There we go. We good? Okay. All right. 
So, we are gonna go over our H Brothers sounds, boys and girls, because we love our H Brothers. Now, Chunky Monkey says, remember, when you see these two, when the, we see these H Brothers in a word, we do not separate the team because a team always works together. So this is our very quiet brother. He is Shane, and Shane is the quiet brother, and so he says, Shane, the quiet brother, says, shh. So if you see this chunk in a word, S-H, it says, shh. Now, we have, you know, there's always one in every bunch. We have the mean brother, Theo. And Theo always sticks out his tongue. And sometimes he has a thimble on his thumb. Theo has a thimble on his thumb. And he will say, F hmm. F, mm, f, mm, good. So Theo always sticks out his tongue and he has a thimble on his thumb. F, mm, good. Now, there's always one brother who can never put away his phone and that's Phil. Phil our phony brother. Phil is P-H, and he says F, F, like phone. Phil says F, like phone, like an I, phone. P-H says F, like phone. Now, Charlie is one of my favorite brothers because he loves trains. And Charlie just loves to make sounds for his trains. So he's our train engineer, and he says, So CH can have three sounds when we see that in the words. It can say, So Charlie is our train engineer and he makes the most sounds because he's playing with his train, okay? Now we call this in our class Coach Smith because Coach Smith is always in our school and they think that this drawing in my classroom looks like our Coach Smith. And you know, coaches always have a whistle. So this is actually Wheeler, the coach brother, and he has a whistle. And he says, like whistle, whistle. The W-H that you hear is in the beginning of the word whistle. That's the chunky monkey sound. Now, we have a couple more sounds we're gonna go over. And we've already talked about pirates today. And so this is my favorite sound. He says, R as in car and far. R as in car and far. We have the sound that makes the ending sound of the word boy. It's called oi. Oi as in a boy with a toy. And that is spelled O-Y. Oi as a boy. Now, O-I-Oi is oi as in oink or coin. You may not use this oi at the end of English words. Why? Because English words don't end in I. That's why. Okay? 
And then the last sounds we're going to review today are our bossy, oh, Chunky Monkey, I'm going to put you down because you look like you're about to fall. Twins. These are our bossy twins. Okay. These sounds say the A sound. Okay. A as in day. Now, which one do you think you can use at the end of English words? A-I or A-Y? They both say the same sound, A. Because when two vowels go to walking, the first vowel does the talking. That's right, you use A-Y at the end of English words because English words cannot end in I. That's why. Very good. So A-Y would come at the end of an English word, and if you see A-Y together, like day or play, it says A. Good job. And then the bossy twin A-I in the middle of the word would say A. Good. So this twin does not come at the end of English words because she does not. She can't end the English words because the English words don't end in I. Now, so our book that we read was all about a little boy teaching his cats to read. And so Miss Underwood practiced some of the things with you that that little boy did to teach his cats to read. We practiced the flashcards like he did. We practiced some of the sounds. I don't think he did that, but we did that just to make sure that we hadn't forgotten that today. So I want you to think about what Nick did to teach his little cats to read that we hadn't talked about. Or something. He took one of their drawings and he made a story from a drawing. And then he acted out that drawing and that story. And then he found a book about that make-believe story. So maybe today you would take the time to draw and write because all of my boys and girls that I know were really good artists, illustrators, and authors. And I want you to stay that way. And the best way that we can stay that way is to practice, practice, practice. And practice, practice, practice your power words so that we don't lose being able to do those power words at flash speed. Miss Underwood loves my boys and girls from the tops of their head to the bottom of your feet. And I'm going to say it every day, and I know you're probably saying it with me because I can't tell you to stop interrupting me. And I, I am no longer saying that I cannot physically hug you. I am saying I am giving you a virtual hug and a virtual kiss because I know some of you don't like it. So I can say I'm giving you a virtual hug and a virtual kiss. And those of you that like high fives, I'm giving you a double high five today. So Today is going to be a great day. We're going to have a happy Monday. Don't forget to practice like Nick did. And maybe you, the next time we talk, can tell me about you teaching your cat or your dog to read. Or maybe you can teach one of your stuffed animals to read. Or your little brother or your little sister. Or maybe if you have an older brother or older sister that's struggling, you can help them too. It doesn't matter who you help as long as you help somebody. And I want you to spread kindness today. So if the grown-up in your house needs help, help. It's not hard. And please remember, please and thank you. Because everybody is stressed out. And including you and your grown-ups. So don't forget to say please and thank you. Those are three little words. And those will get you very far. So remember, boys and girls, please and thank you, please and thank you, please and thank you, please and thank you. I love you from the tops of your head to the bottom of your feet. And I will see you 
very soon. Love ya.